right, everyone. Welcome back to the Pinedo Brothers Podcast. I'm James Mio, and my brother... Peter Pinedo. We are broadcasting live here from beautiful Burbank, and uh, we've got about 30 minutes of content to talk about. We're comparing um, one of my feature films, The Extrovert, to a scene, a scene from The Extrovert, to a scene in... Ben Hur, one of my all-time favorites. But in the meanwhile, a little bit more about us. We are filmmaking brothers and novelist brothers, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, who have, uh, who are Catholic artists that are working to revitalize the world of Catholic art. This podcast talks about what inspires us and what that mission means to us. Shall we get to it, Pete? Let's get right into it. All right. Excellent. All right. So I thought we would start a bit uh, talking about Ben-Hur. Not everyone knows about this. This is a film that came out. Peter, why don't you Google it? That it when, when did it come out? Uh, 1954, I believe it is. Um, one of the big Bible epics that started the whole, uh, continued the whole sandals and stone sort of thing. Um, let's see what Peter's looking at right now. 1959. 1959, great. Mm -hmm. Three hours and 44 minutes long. It's a really long movie. <laughs> hey, it's worth it. It's worth every second. Uh, it's a story about a uh, Jewish man, Ben-Hur, who gets framed for a crime that he didn't commit. He gets framed for uh, instigating insurrection against the Roman Empire, which is, you know, never a good career choice. Uh, he uh, gets sent to the gallows and has a, a, it's basically one of the great revenge stories where his work he gets he wants to plot his revenge against the Roman centurion who framed him one of his childhood friends um, along the way he meets a certain carpenter by the name of Jesus Jesus Christ <laughs> I've heard of him I've yeah so have I he's, uh, he's a, a good uh, <laughs> he's, he's a, a, also a, quite an inspiration for us um, but this carpenter gives Ben-Hur a drink of water when he's about to die during, uh, on his trip to the gallows. Um, so at his lowest moment, this, uh, this man helps him, um, to continue on. Later on, you, uh, they meet again. And that actually, that scene where they meet the second time is the scene that I want to look at with you today, Peter, which really inspired a section of... The extrovert, in specific, like it inspired a long stretch of the extrovert, or like a whole storyline, but in particular, and uh, it really helped inspire one scene, and we'll show that scene later on. But the scene that we're about to watch is when Judah Ben Hur, the protagonist of Ben Hur, uh, meets Jesus for the second time. This time, he has escaped from the galleys. Uh, he has made good his revenge. And he is now trying to find his family. And he encounters Jesus on the way to Calvary. So Jesus is carrying the cross. He's at Jesus' lowest moment. And we can see what, how Judah responds to this. So I'll go ahead and play the film. Play the, play the clip without any further ado. I hope you guys enjoy. brought you here to this when I hoped you haven't failed Esther
Okay, we're back. So, that scene gives me chills every time. Yeah, it's very powerful. Oh, sure. And just to think, that scene was still, that movie, Adjusted for Inflation, is one of the most successful of all time. Mm -hmm. I think it's top 10. Peter, you can check that later on. <laughs> but um, it's incredibly religious. Incredibly religious. And the themes that are in it continue to this day. Um, which is why I put it in my movie, mm. or our, our movie, the movie that I directed that we made together. In any case, that movie is called The Extrovert, and it's a story about, um, well, there's, there's three main characters, but the main storyline focuses about a young man who finds himself in an out-of-body experience. Um, he's an angry atheist who is... Uh, Found, just he sees himself wandering the halls of a hospital and then he sees himself lying there and he realizes that's me the soul does exist <laughs> he's come face to face with that um, and then he finds out to his horror that he's scheduled to have the plug pulled on him so he's about to die and uh, his only helper is a young hospital chaplain by the name of Father Peter who is has the gift the dubious honor of being able to speak to disembodied spirits um, but he doesn't know how to deal with this gift it's it's kind of beyond him he's young he's just starting out on it this is his first job uh, out of the seminary and he does not know what to do with this because he thinks people call him crazy um, and he realizes though after speaking with this spirit that this man is very angry and he is if he's to die in this state with all this hatred that he has it would not go well in the afterlife and so he's very uh, conflicted about what he should do at this moment mm -hmm. uh, with this man and so this scene that we're about to play leads uh, is after his first it comes after his first interaction with this angry vengeful spirit um, that he knows is about to die, mm -hmm. uh, and he knows is about to be lost forever, and so he doesn't really know what to do. But he knows he has. To, he feels like he has to try and do something. But in any case, shall we do the scene? Let's go. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, that's that's one of my I think one of my favorite scenes from the movie for sure. A very thank powerful you. one. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying that. Tell me, uh, tell me more. What? Why is that? Well, I, it's actually a, it's kind of interesting to me that that uh, you say that those two scenes that we just watched are kind of linked, because to me they're they're kind of very opposite in a lot of ways. Um, I think the Ben Hur scene is very large and big, big scale, and I think that the the extrovert scene <clears throat> is one of the it's that's one of the most personal scenes. It's very um, microscopic in fo focusing on Father Peter there, um, and kind of you're inside of his head. You hear his his prayers without him talking. You just hear it, his his thoughts in. Um, you see his struggle. I, one of the reasons I really like that scene is because it, it makes the character of Father Peter very uh, three-dimensional, and that if in, oftentimes I think in, when uh, a movie portrays a priest, he's either you know it's either from a very negative or a very positive light, and if it never really from a like oh this guy's a human being and he has his own struggles as well, so uh, that's why one of the reasons I really like that scene that. Plus, just the way that it's kind of uh, cut and put together, I think, is very, very accentuates the struggle inside of him. So, yeah, I think uh, it's interesting to me that you say that uh, Ben Hur was an inspiration for that. I'd be interested in knowing how it, how it inspired it. Thank you. I I um, that I I took so much from that scene. Well, first of all, I think anything that I do and. Speaking of thirst, isn't it hot? <laughs> I don't know, folks, if you, where you're watching from, it's hot. But in Burbank, it's around 100 right now. And we had to turn off our AC so because for sound purposes. So forgive us if uh, we might be a little shiny. <laughs> but in any case, um, that scene from Ben-Hur where uh, Ben-Hur tries to give water to Jesus is... Uh, I mean, it influences everything that I make um, because I, I always think back to it. Um, I always think back to what that scene represents because, you know, we know on the cross, Jesus was not suffering from just, he was, I'm sure he was suffering from plain thirst, but he was not just suffering from that. When he said, I thirst, there was a longing for souls. There was a longing for him to, uh, to be able to save all and bring all to him. To make all things new for everyone um, and that's why he's there on the cross for us and what that scene at Ben-Hur represents for me is a desire to reciprocate that like not just to reciprocate it but to give something for Jesus something to allay his thirst in some way and how do we allay Christ's thirst if we think about how that longing is not for water, but a longing for souls, by bringing him souls? Um, and so what I was thinking about with that scene is, what in the extrovert with Father Peter's making dinner, is the idea of the, the motif of water as the motif of souls, and the uh, motif of thirst as the longing for bringing those souls to Christ. Um, the longing for souls just like Christ had that longing. Um, you notice Father Peter first drives in the rain. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's an idea of water right there. And then the next thing, he boils water. Um, mm -hmm. This to the next shot you see he's turbulent, he's boiling water. And then um, the pasta breaks a little bit but not quite. You don't really see the pasta snapping, which is the idea of the cross also. Of the bones of him are not broken. Um, and then the blood poured out is the sauce. Uh, the sauce poured out. But then you go back and he puts the fork down and he's looking at the glass of water at the table. And you see that he... There's a moment where we told Andrew, the actor, just sit there and just look at the water. And from that moment where he's looking and looking at the water, you cut to the cross. There's, it's, it's very abrupt. There's no reason for it beyond I want people to connect and looking at the water to the cross. 
that whole connection between the two of them. Um, and that's the idea. That, that's what I want. I want people to connect. I thirst with the cross. And then thinking about how can we, what Father Peter's thinking about is how can I bring these souls to Christ? How can I bring this soul to Christ? This moment in time is important. It's given to me. I don't know what to do, but I know I, 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 I want to do something. Why? And then he has the whole struggle with God is why, why are you not telling me how I can serve you? I know you want me to, but why aren't you telling me? So the idea of thirst is very important in that scene and, the, and in Ben-Hur. You're right. It, as far as the mise-en-scene of Ben-Hur, there's nothing, nothing connecting uh, my tiny little scene to, to, uh, to that, that epic that is Ben-Hur and the epic of that scene with all the, the storylines converging, Jesus coming back, Ben-Hur seeing him, Ben-Hur's family are the women that you see at the beginning and they're, he doesn't realize that they're there and he's been searching for them for so long. So it's, it's a master class of, of filmmaking. That's not how my scene connects with Ben-Hur as, as, as far as the, the, the wonder of cinema that it is. It's the theme of thirst and wanting to give Jesus a glass of water, but then getting it kicked away mm -hmm. at the last moment. He fails. He's not able to. Ben-Hur is not able to, to give Jesus water. Father Peter is exper experiencing that same thing where he wants to, it's, he's thirsty. He wants to give a glass of water to Jesus. He recognizes Jesus' thirst and has it in himself. But it gets, he feels like it's getting kicked away at the last moment. He doesn't know how to give this glass of water to Christ. Um, so in that moment, he's experiencing similar pain to what Christ is experiencing on the cross. And that's why it was so important to have that close-up of the cross right there, just to be just like, this is, this is important. Connect this. Um, I've been talking a lot. <laughs> This is a conversation. I apologize. Tell me, tell me more. Does that does that make any sense to you? What 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 are what are you seeing? What are you thinking? Yeah, and no, I think that I I see kind of what you're talking about now. But uh, it sounds like the yeah the main idea there is that idea of thirst and how um, all characters involved in the two different stories we talked about are experiencing a different kind of are similar but different kinds of thirst on uh, that idea of them being parched and thirsting is very important to them but uh what what how come you latched on to that though like what what is uh important about that idea of thirst to you well in life it's it's the reason why i want to be an artist is as an artist we have a desire to connect with others we want to we want to share this, whatever it is, this, this idea, this, this message, this little glimmer of truth, this, this little glimpse of beauty, a, a bit of joy from beyond the world. Whatever it is, we want to share it with someone. And in being able to connect with others and share with others, we, if we actually impart truth, if we actually impart art, then we change them. And actually, even if we impart falsehood, if we impart lies, we change them. We, uh, we have this longing to be able to reach out to those that are, that we couldn't just see, by. Right? we can't just, I can talk to you, I can talk to our friends, I can talk to my wife, I can talk, I, I, I can do that, I can connect. Um, and that is the most important work that I have, absolutely. But as an artist, I have a desire to reach out beyond that to the, mm -hmm. to the world as I, as I perceive it. And if I'm going to do that and do that well, then I would add to that desire that I have an obligation to impact those souls, those lives for the better. And if I'm doing that, then it's a desire to 
if I if I bring it if I do my job properly, then it's bringing them closer to Christ is the is the end uh, that would be accomplished by consuming any of my art by by watching any of my movies by reading anything that I've written, um, and so that desire to bring souls to Christ is m very much is what I latched onto when I watched Ben Hur trying to give water to Jesus. And so I remember after I shot that scene, I remember um, it was it was kind of intense. I remember it was a lot of screaming and yelling going on because like not not in the scene but behind the scenes. Like it wasn't anger at someone. It was just the emotion of it, the raw emotion that I wanted Andrew to get, that I wanted to have on the scene, I thought we needed to we needed to scream, we needed to yell, we, I needed to impart what was going on, boiling beneath the surface of all this, and so it was it was draining to for me to be screaming and yelling, and I'm sure it was draining for Andrew because he was also doing it, and at the same time he was getting screamed and yelled at, um, and so to, we kind of we went through that in that moment and. It was very volatile, and I remember at the end of it, I wanted to go and compose myself for a bit because we had other stuff to shoot. So I we went in, I went into the closet and I just I said like I was in a closet and I I think there was a crucifix somewhere there. And I remember saying, "Look, I don't know if this is any good, <laughs> but I did it because I wanted. I hope that." somehow it could bring souls to you. Um, and that is the motif. That's the connection. That's why I latched onto it. And um, I still don't know if it's any good, but I do want it to do that, to make that end. I mean, I obviously want everyone to watch The Extrovert because um, I want to be able to make more movies, you know? And if more, everyone watches it, then I'll be able to go and make more. But at the same time, I also want people to watch it because I hope to do that end goal of an artist, you know? And the fact that people haven't, like I'm just being honest, haven't watched it mostly, uh, that very few people have watched it, is that kind of feeds that pain that, okay, we, I haven't connected. I don't, I, I don't know if we'll be able to connect at any point in time. I don't know if we'll be able to make another film, you know? So that pain of an artist is really what I was latching on to but connecting that pain to the higher ideal of Christ on the cross and what his thirst was like. Now that's that's very interesting to me. Yeah. So you so the, basically, I think what I understood you to say is that that idea of um, those words "I thirst" are uh, that I'm I'm long that longing inside of someone. That's what you latched onto, and that's what you kind of tie in intrinsically to the idea of being an artist and the how an artist has that similar kind of thirst where he or she wants to um, has something inside themselves that they want to share with others um, and I think <clears throat> we as Catholic artists artists kind of uh, believe that even if someone is not a person per se of, of faith that they if they are pursuing this idea of the good, the true, and the beautiful, and they're, they're pursuing whether they realize or not uh, God. And so them wanting to share the good, the true, and the beautiful is them um, perhaps unconsciously want to sh wanting to share and bring others to God. Um, so yeah, in that, in that way that the idea of being wanting to be an artist and wanting to share uh, with others your vision is very much an idea of wanting to bring others to God, whether you realize it or not. And so I think, um, so if, am I correct then in it saying that for you, that the idea of the pain of wanting to share and wanting to show others your, your vision of beauty um, as an artist is kind of similar in the way that the pain uh, uh, Christ experienced there and wanting to to bring others, or uh, bring souls to himself, and then also the idea of Father Peter experiencing that same pain and wanting to bring souls to Christ. Is that kind of 
correct there? Yeah, I think so. I think that uh, you summed it up well. I don't think that my desire is anywhere near as perfect as uh, as Christ. I, I know it's not anywhere near as perfect as Christ. There's a lot of uh, vain glory inside me, and maybe that's why, you know, up till this point, I, I haven't been able to meet that goal to to feed that desire because that's I'm trying to get that burned away. Um, and I definitely think that Father Peter, you know, I wrote that character, so I think that Father Peter's desire was a lot more pure than mine, um, a lot more perfect than mine. I don't like the word pure, it doesn't give what I'm trying to say, but a lot more perfect than mine. Um, but yeah, they are connected, so I think you summed it up properly. I, I'm not sure, yeah, I, I, I I don't want to make my desire seem so noble. I think that there's a danger when you, <laughs> when you have a, when you think that your means of work, that your mode of work is better than everyone else's mode of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I see that a lot these days. Um, and I think that that desire to connect with others and be, uh, and bring souls to Christ can be met in a lot of other, uh, a lot of other, you know, means of work, uh, mm -hmm. and maybe I'm called to go out and find that other mean of work. You know, maybe that's the right way to do. I mean, being a father is a good example of that. Um, so, but yes, that's a long way of saying I think you're right. Um, to with just some caveats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, I'm not definitely not trying to to say that an artist is the is the ultimate way or the only way I think that everyone is given their their different uh, talents different skills and then also the different longings for for reasons that lead them to different paths but I think that for every person no matter um, what it is that they devote their lives to they it, they are capable of leading others to Christ in in their own way and I think that for artists, yeah, it's a it's a very um, I think oftentimes more conscious kind of burn feeling that feeling of searching for something or feeling, wanting to share something with other people that kind of makes a lot of artists uh, a little bit crazy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, here's hoping we get to uh, we get to share something with a lot of people. Yeah. You know, hopefully that uh, this is where we're at now is not the end. I mean, definitely not for you. I think I see a lot of, a lot of bright uh, ahead, ahead for, for your artistic creation. So let's uh, hopefully keep working at it. But we're out of time, and um, I, it looks like we're both just about out of whiskey. I know I am. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we hope that you've enjoyed this. This has been... Uh, the second episode of the Native Brothers podcast. Hopefully, we'll have a third. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, uh, you might be uh, interested in checking out the Extrovert. It's available now on Amazon Prime. You could follow us at uh, the Native Brothers. It's, it's just the Native Brothers. Is that the handle mm -hmm. on Instagram? Yeah. The Native Brothers is the Instagram handle. If you want to follow us there, but Amazon Prime, Amazon Instant Video is where you can check out the Extrovert or the ExtrovertMovie.com. In any case, I'm James Pinedo. And I'm Peter Pinedo. We'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for joining us.